Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Internet Computer Developer Journey. In today's episode 1.5, Deploying Canisters, we're going to put together all of the things that we've accomplished in the previous tutorials and finally deploy our poll dApp onto the ICP mainnet network, allowing for our canister to be publicly accessible through the canister's URL, meaning you can send your poll to friends all over the world and have them vote on your dApp. In module 1.3, we created this dApp by writing the backend canister code that allows for users to vote on what their favorite programming language is given four options and then have those options be saved in the dApp using functions that make canister update calls. Then we created a simple UI that allows users to interact with those simple canister update calls, making the dApp something that is fully functional and looks good for users to interact with. Then we deployed that project locally and we reviewed how the backend functionality is integrated with the front end UI. Now we deployed it locally, meaning that we didn't need Cycles or a Cycles wallet. In order to deploy to the mainnet, however, we do need Cycles and a Cycles wallet. So then in the previous module 1.4, we learned how to acquire Cycles and get a free Cycles coupon, and then how to set up our Cycles wallet so that we can be ready to deploy this full stack pull dApp to the internet computer protocol. So that's what we're going to be accomplishing in today's tutorial, is we're going to be putting it all together and deploying that project to the mainnet. So since we're going to be building off of the previous two modules, 1.3 and 1.4, if you haven't followed along with those already, I highly recommend that you do so. And then we're going to jump right into it. So you're going to open a terminal window and we're going to want to navigate into the directory where we stored our pull dap files. So in the command line, I'm going to do print working directory and see that I'm currently in my user's home directory. On Mac systems, we can also open the finder, go to the go menu in the top and click on home. Then we can find that developer journey working directory and then that pull directory. And we can pull that into the command line to get that full file path. Then we're going to want to pre-append that file path with the command cd for change directory. And then we can see that our prompt has changed into pull and we can pwd again to get that full directory path. So now that we are in our projects directory, First, we're going to want to use the npm command, and then we're going to want to follow that with install. This is going to install all of the necessary packages for our front end. Once that runs, it is time to register, build, and deploy our dApp onto the mainnet. In order to do that, first we need to ping the mainnet with the command dfx ping and then ic. ic refers to the internet computer mainnet. And we just want to make sure that we have a connection to the mainnet before we go ahead and try to deploy something to it. And you can see that it's going to return some information about the current API version and the replica's health status. So now that we've confirmed that we have a connection to the IC mainnet, we can go ahead and deploy our DAP to the mainnet. Before we do that though, we want to make sure that DFX is using the identity that we created and redeemed our cycles coupon for. So we're going to use the DFX identity who am I command and make sure that we are using that identity that we created and redeemed our coupon with in the previous tutorial. We can further verify that we are using the right identity by using the DFX wallet, network, IC, and then balance to return the balance of cycles that we have in this developer identity. And from the previous tutorial where we redeemed our cycles coupon for 10 trillion cycles, we can see that those are stored appropriately in our developer identity. So now we can go ahead and use the dfx deploy command. Remember that dfx deploy without any other inputs is going to deploy all of the canisters to find in the project dfx.json file and then we need to use the flag network ic in order to deploy the project to the mainnet remember that 
Up until now, we've just been deploying the project locally, so we haven't used this network flag. And in module 1.1, exploring a live demo, we use this flag, but instead of network IC, we use network playground to deploy to the Matoko playground. So now to actually deploy to the mainnet, we're going to use the flag network IC, and we're going to hit enter, and we're going to see the output deploying the canisters to the mainnet. And we're going to see that the pull backend canister has been created on network IC, and this is the canister's ID. Then we can see that the pull front end canister has been created on network IC, and this is that canister's ID. And then it's going to go through the same functions that it does when deploying locally, it's going to generate the candid files, it's going to install the code into the canisters, and then it's going to set up the other front end assets. And then we can see that instead of getting an output that uses a local domain such as 127.0.0.1, we can see that we have the canisters ID dot icp zero dot io and so this is a public url that we can give to anyone in the world and they can go to this url in their web browser and see our dap and then interact with it and vote on it and we can see that the functionality works the same as it did locally and we can go ahead and send this to our friends we can publish this on um a website, we can do all sorts of different things with this program now that it's running on the mainnet. So that's going to wrap up this episode. This was just a short tutorial on how to deploy directly to the mainnet. In the next episode, we're going to take a look at how to manage canisters. So now that we have our canisters running on the mainnet, how do we manage and take care of them in order to maintain them for long running projects? We'll take a look at things such as starting and stopping the canister, upgrading the canister, how to top the canister up with cycles when it gets low, and all sorts of other important functionalities for maintaining our projects throughout the long term. That'll wrap things up for today. Be sure to subscribe to the Definity YouTube channel if you enjoyed today's episode so that you're notified when the next episode is released. And be sure to like and comment on this video to give us some feedback on how you're enjoying this series so far. There will be some links in the video description below, including the link to the written tutorial for this module and some other links to our developer resources such as the developer forum and the developer discord channel. That's it for this episode. Take care.